Hello, in the previous video we said that because radioactive decay is a random process, we are not able to predict for one particular nucleus when it's going to decay. However, given a very large population of nuclei of the same nuclei, then the rate of decay becomes entirely predictable. So in this video, we are going to derive the formula that describes the radioactivity. So we start with this assumption that the number of decay per unit time is proportional to the number of undecayed nuclei. I think this is a very reasonable assumption. If you double the number of undecayed nuclei, then of course the number of decay per unit time should be doubled as well, right? So let's translate this into math. So we write here A is equal to lambda n. A represents activity. Now what is activity? Well, activity just means number of decay per unit time. N represents the number of undecayed nuclei. As we said, we believe that A is directly proportional to N. The constant of proportionality is called the decay constant, denoted by symbol lambda. Let's continue. Now, since activity is the number of decay per unit time, we can write A as negative dn dt, because the rate at which n is decreasing is also equal to the number of decay per unit time, right? But because dn dt is a negative number, because it's a decrease, we've got to stick a negative sign here to make it overall a positive number. Now, if you're good with your math, you straight away realize that you are going to do integration. So let's rearrange the terms so that on this side, we have all the terms that contains n. On the other side, we have all the terms that do not contain n. Now we are ready to integrate both sides. So for time t, we are going to integrate between t is equal to 0 and t is equal to t. So at t is equal to 0, n is equal to n naught. So n naught represents the initial number of undecayed nuclei. And then at time is equal to t, the number of undecayed nuclei is of course n. So what do you get when you integrate 1 over n with respect to n? You get ln, right? Then stick in the limits, you get ln n over n naught. Lambda is the decay constant, which is a constant. So when you integrate this thing, all you get is lambda t. Throw the ln over to the other side and it becomes the exponential function. So ta-da! This is the formula that describes how n varies with time t. So it looks like it's an exponential decay. The population starts with n naught number of undecayed nuclei but the number will decrease exponentially over time. So the rate of decay is determined by the decay constant. The larger the decay constant, the steeper the exponential decay will be. Which makes sense because the decay constant is kind of like the probability of decay per unit time. It kind of represents the fraction of the population that will decay per unit time, isn't it? So the larger the decay constant, the faster the population will decay. The gradients of this graph is of course the n dt, but why is the n dt? Isn't it just the activity? So the fact that the gradient of this graph is becoming gentler and gentler tells us that the activity is also decreasing over time. So why is the activity not constant? Well, because A is equal to lambda n, and n is decreasing over time. As the population decay, the number of undecayed nuclei decreases over time, and therefore the activity must also decrease over time. In fact, if we stick lambda to both sides of this equation, you will realize that lambda n naught is actually the initial activity at time t is equal to 0. And lambda n is just the activity at any time t. So we have a is equal to a naught e to the power of negative lambda t. So besides n, a also decreases exponentially with time. In practice, how do we measure a? We use a GM tube that gives us some count rate. Now the count rate is not exactly equal to the activity because not every decay results in a radiation particle that enters the GM tube. And not every radiation particle that enters the GM tube triggers a count. But then it's reasonable to assume that the count rate is proportional to the number of decay per unit time, right? So if the count rate is proportional to activity, then the count rate should also decrease exponentially with time. So N, A, and C all decay exponentially with time. In fact, they follow the same rate of decay. Okay, let's go back to N equals to N naught e to the power of negative lambda t. Now there's something very adorable about exponential decay. That is, it decreases by the same percentage per unit time. So it does not decrease by the same number per unit time because if it does, then it's a linear graph. But an exponential decay is unique in the sense that the percentage decrease is constant. For example, if it takes this amount of time for 10% of the population to decay, then in the next interval of time, another 10% of what is remaining in the population will decay. Meaning if it decreases from n naught to 90% of n0 here, then here will be 90% of 90% of n0. And this will be 90% of this number, this will be 90% of this number, 
this will be 90% of this number and so on. So the percentage decrease is constant. Now, have you heard of this thing called the half-life? So half-life is the amount of time taken for half of the population to decay. So let's rearrange this equation here to be like this. So if we're interested in half-life, that means we're interested in the time t when n becomes half n naught. So if you write t as half-life and n as half n naught, we get half is equal to this thing here. So t half represents half-life. Now let's take ln on both sides. Half is just 2 to the power of negative 1, right? So it becomes negative ln 2. On this side, when you take ln e, it becomes 1. So we are left with this term. Ta-da! So half-life is equal to ln 2 over lambda. So the larger the decay constant, the faster it decays, and therefore the shorter the time it takes for half the population to decay. So if the population started with n naught number of undecayed nuclei at t is equal to 0, then one half-life later, we'll be left with 0.5 n naught. Give you another half-life, we're left with a quarter. Give you another half-life, we're left with 1 8. Another half-life, 1 over 16. So if you spot this pattern, you realize that instead of this equation, we can also write this equation. The number of undecayed nuclei is just the initial number times half to the power of number of half-lives. So we have derived quite a lot of useful results and it's quite amazing that it all started with just one simple assumption. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!